I'm Kathy Ging again, and I'm going to make this last presentation on the possibility of some alternatives to the wireless smart meters or the ones that speak only when spoken to, whatever you believe about these next meters that we really don't know too much about. Um, why didn't we think of that? E-Web staff remarked in the 90s when I asked some staff to lunch at the Oregon Electric Station, suggesting they consider adding information to water and electric services. It's now an opportune time to explore whether fiber optics may be preferred alternative to wireless smart meters for Oregon's largest publicly owned utility, all things considered. Voters changed our charter in 1999, allowing eWeb to sell info services. They installed fiber optics in all substations, but for a couple reasons did not install the last mile. Staff reported on April 2012 the fiber optics would uh, be too expensive, uh, 30 to 50 million more than the uh, scenario that they were proposing at that time. Other communities with publicly owned utilities have installed fiber optics and were successful against legal challenges like Chattanooga, Tennessee, EPB fiber optics, publicly owned as is their electric company like eWeb. They said that the court threw out two lawsuits and it did not cost them much in legal fees. I talked to the corporate division twice about their system. Their system is paying off faster than anticipated with 50,000 subscribers of which 80% use two or more of APB publicly owned cable, TV, phone, and internet services. By the way, these 50,000 subscribers have wired meters for their electric service and connection to the smart grid but another 70,000 customers have wireless meters who do not subscribe. EPB allows residents, by the way, to opt out and keep their old mechanical analog meters, and they haven't decided on an opt-out fee, opt fee yet. By the way, that's a big push button, a doorbell for eWeb. They have not decided on the opt-out fee, but I've, I've been told by one former board member it could be 25 to 50 bucks a month. If we get this out to people, this could be a big thing because, see, if you don't opt out, then you know, you're going to have the radiation of some sort, and if you opt out, it's going to cost you a lot more electrical bill. Providing the fastest internet in the Western Hemisphere, Chattanooga experienced an economic boom. 6,000 new jobs were attracted there by startup companies. Their population is only 17,000 more than Eugene. The, the area covered is 600 square miles, and they do spill over to some other communities. They took 10 years to plan their fiber optic system, and the tech came around to them, including pricing. The city council there voted unanimously to approve about $160 million in bonds, and DOE gave, gave them another $100 million. That money is no longer available, stimulus money. But in the past month, I talked with staff at the Chamber of Commerce here at Alcog, a local wireless engineer, people at Metro, and I invite them and any of you or your connections who think you have a positive contribution to a meeting to consider fiber optics, pros and cons, and then plan a community-wide forum to discuss fiber optics to homes and businesses. The pros, fiber optics is already in substations and schools, U of O, most government offices, and some downtown businesses. Many of us pay more money to Comcast monthly for electric gas and water than we do to uh, eWeb, even in the winter. Having a publicly owned info highway provider seems like the obvious top choice for ownership of internet access, cable and phone. Also, as utilities may need to downsize as more decentralized on-site systems come into use, this would be another income stream to make them extant. The disparity is growing between the information rich and poor. It is difficult to even apply for a job now unless you do it online. Having better access could help our community earn more money and attract new business and industry. Eugene received one of eight planning grants from Oregon this past year to expand broad broadband services. A policy paper is being prepared to present to City Council this summer. So why is eWeb jumping the gun with this contract before this policy paper gets put out? Money was not allocated for infrastructure, but should eWeb wait to see what this policy paper says? It is true that most areas will have fiber optics, they're saying, by 2030. Then why waste money on an unproven technology now? Italy and many other European countries have fiber optics and use wired meters. Maybe they value their health more. The cons of fiber optics is the 30 to $50 million more, but what is our health worth? 
Some skepticism exists if eWeb's analysis was even correct in April 17, 2012. You can go back and read the 50-page scenario, AMI, Advanced Meter Infrastructure, Business Case Scenario. And competition is already existing from two or three other providers, which they may do predatory pricing. But in fact, in, in uh, Chattanooga, they told us that although uh, uh, Comcast did lower the prices on some things, people still wanted to go with a publicly owned utility. Financing. Since eWeb is not able to use its rate base, this is where the city council handicapped them, to finance fiber optics, one avenue may be citizen bonds, allowed in the Oregon Constitution, but to my knowledge, not yet utilized. Public entities authorize them, and denominations could be as small as 500 bucks, similar to the mini bonds that financed eWeb's uh, headquarters in the river. Also, the FCC has a lifeline program, and eWeb has bonding capability. Wealthy investors or philanthropists might be tapped. Google has installed fiber optics in Kansas City and is planning for Austin, although I've heard that it's mainly in the houses of the rich. We may need legislature involvement in seeking lottery funds. We can get them to pass an act. So should eWeb consider combining with other publicly owned utilities, of which there are five that serve Lane County, and do fiber optics in some of those areas? An ad hoc committee could make recommendations for eWeb board and staff to consider. I don't think that eWeb has adequately considered the enormous costs of IT, information technology, and switching that would be entailed in the Census USA contract now being considered. Many of us think eWeb is too optimistic about how long the digital meters will last. One authority says as long as a personal computer, five to seven years, whereas eWeb claims 10 to 15 years. Besides the inflated costs of meter replacement, eWeb may need major funds for legal liability issues, as Jack Dresser well described, for the inevitable litigation from those with medically sensitive conditions, not allowing them to be exposed to wireless smart meters and more legal costs for possible house fires, but now the insurance companies are saying it's not their fault. Courts may rule, you were warned by families for safe meters. Instead of, <laughs> instead of adding microwaves, should eWeb create a citizen staff and board committee to strategize about fiber optics? More citizens say yes. However, we could also go back to the default position, which is keep the mechanical analog meters, and I'm sure we could find some replacements for those. So thank you.